All right, let's check out this thriller of a free response. Answer the following questions about beryllium oxalate and its hydrate. Ooh, I'm so excited and can't wait. We are asked to calculate the mass percent of carbon, carbon, in the hydrated form of the solid that has the formula, boom. All right, so this is a straightforward mass percent calculation. We wanna know what is the percent carbon in this hydrated compound. Basically, what is the mass carbon out of the total mass of the compound? Now remember, to convert that to percent, you're gonna multiply that by 100. Periodic table's gonna come in handy here. All right, easy enough, mass of the carbon. As I scan my formula here, I recognize that I only have two carbon. So it's gonna be two times the molar mass of carbon, or 12.01. And then the party gets real. The mass of the compound. Well, I've got one beryllium and its molar mass is 9.01. I'm gonna add to that the mass of the two carbons. So two times 12.01, but we're not done. We also have four oxygens and we have three waters. Remember, it's a hydrated compound. So I have to add the mass of those three waters as well. So check out this fancy bracket action, it's gonna be three times the mass of water. And in each water, I have two hydrogen, so two times 1.008, and one oxygen, so one times 16.00. Boom. All right, it's calculator time. Two times 1.1. So our numerator gets us to 24.02. In the denominator, hold on to your hats. All right, so the molar mass of this hydrated compound, 151.078. And as I keep in mind the rules for sig figs, I'm just gonna remind myself where I should round for my final answer. All right, now I'm gonna take 24.02 divided by 151.078. Don't forget to multiply that by 100. As I think about sig figs here, I've got four and what should be five sig figs. So my final answer is gonna have just four, which gets us to 15.90% carbon. Boom, two points. Ooh, all right, let's keep this party rolling. Part B, when heated to 220 degrees Celsius, beryllium oxalate trihydrate dehydrates completely as represented below. Boom, we are driving off the water. If 3.21 grams of beryllium oxalate trihydrate is heated to 220 degrees Celsius, Celsius, calculate each of the following. B part I, the mass of beryllium oxalate formed. All right, now there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the way that I think is easiest. Recognize that we're dehydrating this hydrated compound. We're driving off the water. So if we can figure out what percent the anhydrous salt or the beryllium oxalate without the water is of this compound, then whatever mass of the hydrated compound we're given, we can simply do a percent composition calculation to figure out the mass of the anhydrous beryllium oxalate. If you're confused, just watch. I'm gonna do another percent by mass calculation. Now, I wanna know what is the percent of the beryllium oxalate? So just like in part A, I'm gonna figure out what is the mass of the beryllium oxalate, put it over the mass of the compound and then multiply by 100. Now, if I look back at the previous part, I've already done a lot of the work. Notice that I've already determined the mass of the compound to be 151.078 grams per mole. Now I need to determine what is the mass of the beryllium oxalate without the water. I've already set that up from part A. Essentially, I just need to know the mass of the compound without out the water. Calculator time. One times 9.01 close parentheses plus two times 12.01 close parentheses plus four times 16 close parentheses. This 97.03 represents the mass of just the anhydrous beryllium oxalate. So if I divide that by the mass of the hydrated compound and multiply by 100, again, keep in mind the rules for significant figures gives me 64 0.23% beryllium oxalate. Now, why the heck did I do this? 
the question was asking me for the mass of beryllium oxalate. Well, it's important to remember the law of definite proportions. It doesn't matter what size sample you have. If you had 3.21 grams, which we just so happen to have in this problem, or 100 grams or 90 or 6 million grams of the hydrated compound beryllium oxalate trihydrate, it's always gonna be 64.23% beryllium oxalate, which means to solve this problem, we just need to know what is 64.23% of 3.21 grams? So mass of BeC2O4 equals 3.21 grams times 0.6423. Calculator. 3.21 times 0.6423. If I get 2. 0.06 grams. Boom. Now let's think about this. My 3.21 gram sample is about 64% of the beryllium oxalate salt. The remaining 36-ish percent is mass contributed from the water. Water. Now you could also tackle this using stoichiometry. You are given a one-to-one -one relationship here. So you could determine the number of moles of the hydrated compound, recognize you're gonna get the same number of moles of the anhydrous salt, and then multiply that by its molar mass. Why did I choose to do it this way? Personal preference. You can still get full credit if you do it using stoichiometry. Fun just keeps going. B part II. We're now asked to determine the volume of water released measured at 220 degrees Celsius and 735 millimeters mercury. Anytime you're given things like volume, pressure, temperature, and we're talking about a gas, your mind should immediately be going to, you guessed it, Bivner. Good old PV equals NRT. As you think about this, we were trying to solve for the volume of water vapor. And so if I solve my equation for volume, this becomes volume equals NRT divided by P. Okay, so I need number of moles, I need gas constant, temperature in Kelvin, and pressure. Now, right off the bat, I'm stymied because I need number of moles and I'm not giving that here. Thinking about giving up, and then I remember it's a free response. And the answer is probably given to me somewhat in an earlier part. As I scroll back up here, try to think about how much water has formed. Think of what you just solved for in the previous part. We knew that we had 3.21 grams of this original hydrated sample. We determined that 2.06 grams of the anhydrous salt was formed. How could I figure out how much water vapor was formed? <gasps> Algebra! So this is one of those calculations that students really like to do in their calculator and don't really record it on their paper. Big mistake. Even when it's simple subtraction, show your work. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the credit. All right, my 3.21 gram sample is the total mass of my hydrate. I'm gonna subtract from that 2.06 grams. That's the mass of the anhydrous salt. So what's gonna be left but the mass of the water? Calculator time! 3.21 minus 2.06. 1.15 grams H2O. And all this work to find out number of moles. So I need to convert this grams to moles. One mole of water is about 18.016 grams, which means that I have 0 0.0638 moles of water. And be sure to label, use your units. Okay, so that becomes my N in my Pivner equation, 0.0638 moles. Now we need a gas constant, R. And if you go to your handy dandy formula chart, bro, you're given several R values. Which one should I use? Remember with these gas laws problems, it's the pressure unit that's gonna determine 
which gas constant you use. In the problem, I'm given millimeters mercury. As I look at my formula chart, there is no gas constant directly given to me in using millimeters mercury. But a quick peek down here lets me know that millimeters mercury is equal to torr. So this 62.36 is the one I want to use for my gas constant times 62.36 liters times millimeters mercury per mole Kelvin. All right, let's get some room up in here. Temperature, be cautious here. Remember with the gas laws, we always want our temperature in Kelvin. So I'm gonna take my 220, add to it 273. That'll get me to Kelvin. Finally, divide by our pressure, 735 millimeters mercury. Calculate a time. We got number of moles times 62.36 into times 20 plus 273. And up. All right, we've got three sig figs. This is a constant. We will have three sig figs here, three sig figs. So I need three sig figs. Volume equals 2.67 liters of H2O gas. Boom. All right, and the party just never stops with these free response questions. Woo! I'm having such a good time. A student repeats the dehydration from part B in an attempt to experimentally determine the number of moles of water in one mole of beryllium oxalate trihydrate. The student collects the data shown in the following table. Boom. We know that the compound is a trihydrate, that the ratio between the anhydrous salt and water is one to three. The student is simply trying to experimentally show that. Does she do that? Let's find out. Wait. Okay, it says calculate the total number of moles of water lost when the sample was heated. Now, as you take a moment to look at the data that you're provided with, we've got mass of the empty crucible, mass of the initial mass of sample and crucible, and then the mass of the sample and crucible after the first heating. Basically, when you do this type of experiment, when you heat up the hydrate, you heat off the water. So after it's heated, we should have just the anhydrous salt and the crucible itself. So to get mass of water, we're gonna do 39.69 or the mass of the original hydrated sample in the crucible minus 38.8. Two, or the mass of the crucible in the sample after it's been heated, presumably after all the water has been driven off. And the difference in that mass is gonna be the mass of our water. Do some calculator. 39.69 minus 38.82 is we've got 0 0.87 grams of water. Ooh, feeling really great about myself. About to move on when I realize I won't get the point if I don't convert to moles. So 0 0.87 grams of water. Quick conversion here to moles. One mole of water is about 18.016 grams. .016. Using sig figs here, I get 0 0.048 moles of agua. Boom. All right, we're looking to determine the formula of the hydrated compound. Now, remember, hydrated compound is just a ratio of moles of the anhydrous salt to water. Now, in this particular experiment, the student knows that that ratio is one to three. We're just trying to experimentally, experimentally verify that. We know how many moles of water we have, so now we need to know how many moles of anhydrous salt do we have? To determine how many moles of anhydrous salt, or in this case, beryllium oxalate, it's gonna be a similar calculation that we just did in part I. We're gonna take the mass of the sample and crucible after heating. It should just be the beryllium oxalate and the crucible. And then we're gonna subtract the mass of just the crucible, the 36.48. Calculator time. 38.82 minus 36.48. It gives me 2.34 grams of our anhydrous beryllium oxalate. I'm gonna convert that mass to moles and one mole of beryllium oxalate, I already know because I calculated in an earlier step in my problem. It is 97.03 grams per mole. So sometimes the earlier parts of your free response can really help you out. Save yourself some time. So remember, it's all one giant problem.
So we divide by the molar mass. That's <laughs> zero point zero two four moles of beryllium oxalate. Okay, so what's our formula that we experimentally determine? Again, it's just a molar ratio. What is the ratio between beryllium oxalate and water? As I look at this, it's very clear to me, these numbers are pretty straightforward, but if they're not as clear, a ratio just comparison, you're just gonna divide one into the other. So I'm gonna do 0 0.048 moles of water from part I divided by 0 0.024 moles of my salt. So what does this tell me? The ratio of moles in my formula is one to two. So my experimentally determined formula is gonna be BEC2O4. For every one mole of this, I get two moles of water. Boom, but this is my formula based on the data. <gasps> okay, final part to this free response, and it's a doozy. Now the College Board really likes to ask these types of questions on the free response. It gets your noggin moving and thinking about the experiment. And as you think about these types of questions, think about the actual measurements that were made in the lab. Think about the data. Okay, it says, is the student's experimentally determined waters of hydration greater than, less than, or equal to the waters of hydration in the accepted formula. Provide a reasonable explanation for error and how this error affected the student's results. Okay, so let's first answer the question greater than, less than, or equal to. Experimentally, this student determined the compound to have two waters of hydration, but we know the compound should have three waters of hydration. Easy enough, the students experimentally determined waters of hydration is less than the accepted waters of hydration. Boom. Okay, so there's a point for you right there. Answer the question. Make sure that you answer it based on the answer that you came up with here earlier in the problem. If you came up with an answer in which you had a greater number of waters of hydration, put that here in part D. It's important that each of your subsequent answers is based off of and supported by the earlier parts of the problem. That way you can still get full credit for part D, even if you were completely wrong in part C. College board, that's just so nice, right? Okay, now we need to provide a reasonable explanation for error and how this error affected the student's results. Again, think about the measurements that were made. In a classic hydration lab, what you're doing is you're looking at the mass of the water and the mass of the anhydrous salt. You convert those to moles and you compare. Now in this student's experiment, the ratio was too low. In other words, we need this number to be three or that's the accepted value. So how would this number increase? What would have to happen with this ratio in order to get this number to increase to three? We would have to have a larger numerator and a smaller denominator. In other words, we would have to have driven off more water in order to raise this numerator and also subsequently decrease the denominator. All right, so let's try to put that into words. Our reasonable explanation, the student did not drive off all of the water of hydration. So there is our reasonable explanation. How did this affect the results? As a result, the calculated mass of water was too small. Again, remember, we're thinking about this ratio. This has to be a ratio of three. So this is smaller than what it should be. We need this numerator to be larger. And the calculated mass of anhydrous salt was too large. Boom. We've answered the question less than, provided a reasonable explanation and explained how that error affected the results. Woo! Free response done.